Hi, my name is Quinn, and today I wanted to show you around where I grew up. There are a lot of people that are pretty surprised when they hear that I grew up in Hawaii. And then I tell them that I grew up in a yurt as well, and they're even more surprised. And rather than just trying to explain it to people or walking through what it was like, I figured I'd just make this video and actually show you guys what it's like. So I'm out here um, due, unfortunately, to the coronavirus, um, but I came home to be with my family. This place is off the grid and completely off on its own on 20 acres. So pretty removed, pretty isolate, um, isolated. <laughs> so a lot easier to get away here. Um, but yeah, I'll walk you through what it was like, what I grew up in, and what the property is like. Um, so moving here when we were younger was pretty crazy. We moved here um, in the mid-90s. I'm not sure on exactly what year. Um, I was eight at the time. I have three other siblings, so there's four of us plus my two parents, and we moved into a yurt. I think the original idea was always to build a house, but it just never sort of happened. Um, my little brother had maybe six months old when we moved here, and we all lived in the, that yurt, all six of us, for at least a year before another structure was built um, some of us could move into. So what I'm actually in is called The Studio, and you can find it on Airbnb, actually. My mom rents it out now. And this was originally a workshop where we did woodworking and sort of whatever we needed to do uh, to maintain the property. And then uh, there was also some storage for stuff we brought from our house in Seattle, which is where we moved from and two bedrooms were eventually built, one for my older sister, obviously, because she was like 14 and moving to Hawaii was crazy, living in a year was crazy at that point for her, um, so she needed some space, and then also for myself, when I got to be about 10 or 11, I moved out here as well. Um, but this is no longer that, this is now a beautiful studio, which you can see, and you can stay here if you want. I'll put the link in the description below if you're interested. So yeah, we moved into the yurt, and then we lived there for a total, or I lived there for a total of five years. Um, my mom still spent some time out here. We spent a lot of time in the yurt, specifically I was homeschooled, so we moved here and went to public school initially um, for about a year, me and my little sister. Um, my older sister went to a private school and did quite well there, so she stayed there. But uh, my mom realized that the public school system wasn't quite what she had in mind, so she decided to homeschool us. And that was an interesting adventure. Um, some good, some bad, a lot of time spent together, particularly in a yurt. Not great for uh, emotions and people getting angry or things boiling over. So we also spent some time with the homeschooling group in a way, but we did that for about three years. Um, and then I eventually decided I needed to go to a normal school to reacclimate myself for high school. So for eighth grade, I went to a private school uh, nearby. Hawaii was interesting. I think in retrospect, this place has given me a lot of appreciation for nature and for how things function. So you see like things falling apart. You see things like weather taking things away, um, things rotting, things, branches growing constantly over things. Um, yeah, there's a lot of upkeep required. And so I think I now understand how to make a lot of things function because of that, because I didn't grow up in a city. Um, so I can, you know, fix a lawnmower or you know, build something or make sure something is maintained well, um, which I'm definitely appreciative mm -hmm. of. Yeah, so I definitely have a deep appreciation for nature as well. There are turkeys here, pigs, cows, horses, um, all sorts of animals running around. And you just sort of learn to respect them and stay away from them and appreciate them. And well, I definitely am appreciative of that growing up. And it's really beautiful here, um, really peaceful. And I don't think I knew how much that mattered uh, until I got older and moved to cities and was like, oh, I keep finding myself wanting more and more to be in nature, and I think that probably comes from the time that I spent here. Um, the technical details, so this is a, the largest yurt I think you could buy at the time. There are solar panels on the roof that provide most of the electricity. There's also a generator in case that runs out. Um, and then there's two 10,000 gallon water tanks that feed water into the system. Um, so totally off the grid. There is Wi-Fi now, there wasn't certainly when we grew up here, there was basically no TV, no cell phone, any of that. We did eventually get a cell phone that had like a wire that went all the way up on the roof and had to like stick to the top. It was pretty funny. Um, no privacy for taking phone calls. Definitely not calling girls. Um, oh yeah, and then my parents, like people ask my parents were hippies and I'm like, not really. I don't really know why they thought this was a great idea to be so far removed. Yeah, they're not really hippies. It was just something they decided they wanted to do and they were gonna do it. I don't know. There's not really a good like flower power story and self-isolation and self-sufficiency thing going on. I know my dad wanted to spend more time with the family and I think my mom always is pretty minimalist. She doesn't need a lot, so I think it worked for them, but 
definitely an interesting decision. So let's go take a look, yeah? So first off, let's go ahead and take a look at the studio. Okay. So this is the whole thing, the whole shebang. So that's originally where my room was. This is where my sister's room was. Um, They're like squared out from the corners there. And so she had a decent view out to the rest of the property. Real beautiful, right? I had nothing. Real limited over here. Um, but the work done on this place is pretty impressive. I mean, there was a guy, a local craftsman that built all of this. This is all wood from the property um, that we cut down when the land was cleared. Some koa wood, I believe. Um, super fancy, expensive wood. And here is the bed. You gotta watch your head a little bit. It's a little low clearance, but super cute, right? I'm gonna pan around on that a little bit. Let's see down. Yeah. And then out on the porch here is where you can see. Oh, beer. That's the yard off there in the distance. A little tiny guy right there. Actually looks pretty big on the inside, but small. Beautiful place to have breakfast, hang out. See, that was my window originally. Little tiny view. <laughs> Go ahead and show you around the little living, sitting area. Nice bathroom. All the amenities. Me. And then all this jam. Nice, not bad. I'm really impressed with what they've done with it. I'm gonna take a little view from the outside. So yeah, that is the studio. You could stay there if you're interested. You can go check it out. Hey, Rita. <laughs> you little cutie. So this is the exterior of the yurt. It's built on a deck. Yeah. Solar panels up on the roof above that there. Entree. Well, this is the whole thing. This is what it looks like right now. So built for one at the moment. There's the whole kitchen. Entryway, you can see up above us, it's the skylight all of them come with. This guy. So originally we had some bunk beds over here and then another bed, I believe, over here for my sister. Me and my little sister slept there, and then my little brother was in a kib, crib by my parents' bed. My parents' bed has always stayed there, actually. It's never moved. Lots of time spent reading on this couch here. Fires, because it actually gets quite cold up here. We're 2,000 feet above sea level, so the temperature can drop pretty low. Um, yeah, plastic windows with netting, which is crazy talk. You see that right there? Yeah, just barely. So this is where I grew up. Welcome to my home. This is my crib. <laughs> MTV Cribs with Yurt Edition. Pretty awesome, right? Crazy. Can't believe we spent so much time here, all six of us. It's pretty nuts. Even my parents say it's pretty nuts at this point. So crazy. Oh yeah, over here is all the stuff that keeps this thing going. The generator and the solar panels and all that stuff are attached to this, and it monitors it and makes sure everything is as it should be. Go ahead and take you outside. So, but you're probably, oh, that's my mom right there. Hi, mom. <laughs> Lots of time spent outside, obviously, because it's way easier than spending too much time inside. A little piping for the stove out the roof there. And this is the view from the back. A pretty decent view of things. The ocean way off in the distance there. Let's see. Nice blue sky this morning. It's usually nice during the mornings and then we'll rain the rest of the day and get pretty gross. Um, and the bathroom is underneath the house. So the whole place has its own septic system. Oh, hey Rita. <laughs> Mm -hmm. 
bathroom is down this way. In there. So you had to walk outside late at night in the dark if you needed to use the bathroom, which is always a bit, <laughs> bit of a trepidation. Crazy. Um, and yeah, frogs, ironically, there would always be frogs on this path at night, so you had to walk just to make sure you didn't step on any. It's like the worst feeling having a frog underneath your bare foot. Real gross. Sit down lawnmower right there to take care of the property. And then underneath here is where we keep all the batteries and stuff. Batteries back there that hold all the charge, you can see. Lawnmowers, gas, propane, pilot light, all sorts of stuff and make this place keep running. So this is the stream bed near our place. Um, it's usually running when there's heavy rains. Um, can be flash floods, actually. There's a lot of sort of debris built up in here. I used to play in this as a kid, um, running around with a machete and exploring, falling, <laughs> and getting in trouble, watching out for wild boars. Um, it was pretty amazing. I feel like a total Mowgli jungle kid. That part was pretty cool. I'll give it that. Take a look. Pretty nuts, right? <laughs> 